Hi, I'm Paul Morton with M Advisor. Today we're talking about balance sheets or personal financial statements. So your very first step in your financial plan is almost always just to organize the decisions that you've already made. And one of the easiest ways to do that is to create a balance sheet. Additionally, if you apply for a loan, a mortgage, a car loan, a business loan, whatever it may be, you may be requested to create a personal financial statement, AKA a balance sheet. A balance sheet follows the simple formula. You take your assets, what you own, minus your liabilities, what you owe, and the difference is net worth. Net worth may be positive, net worth may be negative. It all depends on what season of life we're in. And the net worth figure, it varies day to day. If you pay a bill from your checking account, your net worth changes. So this, this number is just a snapshot in this day of history whenever you, you create the balance sheet. And when you do create a balance sheet, it's theoretically supposed to be organized a certain way. And so here's how it should be organized so you can very quickly see your financial health. You list all of your assets first on one side, on the left side of the page, and you start with the liquid accounts or accounts that are either already cash or can very easily be converted to spendable cash. So these are gonna be bank accounts, might be CDs, money markets, essentially anything you have at the bank or credit union would qualify for um, this, this first uh, uh, cash section. Next, any sort of taxable investment that you might have. So this would be like an investment that you own outside of a retirement plan from work. So if you have a brokerage account with some stock that you may have traded, that would go right there in that next, that next line that's easily liquidated into cash. Next is retirement accounts. While retirement accounts, a lot of them can be liquidated to cash, there's usually going to be taxes and potentially early withdrawal fees to, to receive those, those accounts. So it is much harder to liquidate these retirement accounts. So that's gonna be a 401k, 403b, your IRAs, and even your deferred compensation plans like 457b plans. Next is gonna be real estate. You can liquidate or sell a, a piece of real estate, but it might take a while and it might be fairly expensive to do so. And then next, closely held business interests. So if you own a business or you own a partnership, then that will be next. And then lastly is personal property. These are things that you have on hand, but you don't necessarily anticipate selling them. That might be like an art collection, uh, jewelry, um, your cars, computers, things of that nature. And then over on the other side, you list all of your debts or what you owe. And it, it goes from short-term and short-term personal to long-term and then any business debts if you own a business. So it would start with just any unsecured loans. That's credit cards and personal loans, car loans, and then student loans. And I put an asterisk here. So anytime there is more information needed on a balance sheet, that loan or that asset might be listed and then you could put an asterisk. And what that says is that at the bottom, you would have more information. So if you have student loans listed on your balance sheet, but December of this year, they should be forgiven through the public service loan forgiveness program. Well then, while that loan exists, it won't exist for very long. So then that's a note that you would put on the balance sheet. Next would be mortgages. These are debts that are backed by assets. Um, and then finally would be your business debt. So account payables, um, any commercial loans that you have. And if you want to get real granular, it could even be some executive compensation plans that you have listed out, maybe that aren't funded. 
and you add all of these up into one one big aggregate number and then you add these up into one big aggregate aggregate number and then you take the aggregate assets minus the aggregate liabilities equals your net worth what's really great about a balance sheet is you can see how your emergency funds if something were to happen and you needed funds you could see how quickly you could liquidate those 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 top accounts here and you can also see how close you are if you wanted to get out of debt completely do you have the capability of doing that although that may not be a good idea to liquidate all of your assets and, and pay off all of your debts all at, in, in, in one day but it just shows you where you are right now today and that is always good information to have on hand thank you i'm paul morton with M Advisor.